I think some people wonder how I got injured, but um, I was born like this. I was born without legs, without uh, um, knees. So like a little above knees. I didn't have any legs when I was born. So, um, and I started playing wheelchair basketball when, when I was 12. But before that, I just loved sports, I, especially um, baseball. I watched baseball a lot with my, with my dad. And I actually went to um, the stadiums uh, multiple times with my friends. Since when I was a kid, when I was a kid, um, I just loved sports. And I wanted to, I knew I wanted to do something when I grew, grew up. That's, that's what I was thinking when I was like, um, I don't know, like 10 years old. And so when I was 12, um, I went to this event where you can try out uh, wheelchair basketball and which uh, you can actually sit in a basketball chair. And this one team, one local team, um, which really uh, plays like uh, nearby my house, uh, was um, like holding the event. And I tried it and I loved it. I loved how they were like so energetic and they looked so like, um, they looked like they were like having fun like a lot. And I liked it and I was 12, but they were uh, like an adult team. The closest um, age was 24, so like 12 years older than me. But um, they, they were like, hey, do you want to play basketball with us? I was like, well, I'm a kid. Can I play? But um, yeah, that's how I got into wheelchair basketball. Um, so ever since then, um, you know, I, just, I just fell in love with uh, this sport. And my dad actually used to play basketball when he was younger. So he taught me a lot of stuff, like a lot of um, uh, basic stuff, like how to dribble, how to pass, how to shoot. And I knew almost like how to um, control my chair. So that wasn't a big problem, but like uh, using this ball uh, was a big challenge for me. But my dad helped me a lot and my parents, my mom, my mom too, um, they, they took me to practice, they came to practice and took me back to home. And, you know, financially too, they helped me a lot, like huge. And, and also uh, one person helped me a lot too. Uh, his name is Shinpei Oikawa. Uh, he was actually uh, the head coach in Rio and uh, one of the staff members in Tokyo too, uh, Paralympics. And he, I first met him when I just started playing basketball, wheelchair basketball. So when I was 12, I met him and he knew a lot about wheelchair basketball, like basic skills. And he taught me a lot of stuff. And that's how I uh, learned how much like the basic skills are important and stuff. 2007, um, my journey to um, University of Illinois started. That's where Steve used to play. That's where Brian used to play. And I wanted to, the reason why I went, wanted to go there was because uh, I wanted to learn from Michael Frogley, uh, who was known as, uh, who is actually known as the best coach uh, out there in the wheelchair basketball industry. And that was the year 2010. And that year, I finally was able to play with Steve and Brian on the court with the same jersey, uh, same jerseys, and uh, we actually won the college nationals. And that was uh, one of my uh, most uh, favorite moments in, uh, in my career. So I just wanted to get better. I just wanted to get better and um, um, wanted to keep playing at the high, high level. That's how, I, that's how, that's why I wanted to come to Europe. I wanted to, I always uh, loved playing against Landell, uh, when I, even when I played for BG Basket Hamburg. I loved the way uh, Landell played um, as, the, as the team, like the teamwork was great, um, defense was great. I just loved playing against uh, Landell. My dream was to play here, play for this club, so yeah, that's how I got here in 2017.
But I told them that, I told Nick, Nick and the, the club, Andreas too, that um, I only just want to play for two years because I wanted to go back to Japan for, to get ready for Tokyo. In the last one year, I needed it to just you know, settle myself in Tokyo and get ready for uh, the Paralympics. And I thought I was going to be done with playing uh, overseas after Tokyo. But, you know, this pandemic happened and um, Tokyo was postponed. I had, we, in Japan, like there was, there was like a semi uh, lockdown kind of thing. And I had to be away from uh, region basketball. That was my first time actually, uh, since I started, Witcher, uh, I started playing region basketball. It was my first time that I had to uh, not practice, I guess, except for my injuries. Uh, anyway, um, that's when I was thinking, like, how much I loved basketball, how much uh, um, it meant for me, you know, play games and stuff. So, like, a couple months later, I was able to practice again in Japan after the semi-lockdown. And I realized um, how much I loved basketball. And, you know, my passion kind of like uh, came back, I guess. Like, uh, I was like a little kid again, even though I was 32. <laughs> I was like a little kid playing, uh, like having fun out there on the court. And yeah, and I wanted, I was like, I felt like I still want to play in uh, Europe again. Actually, then, around then, around that time, Nikolai sent me a message again. He was like, uh, do you want to come back to Landell? I was so happy about that. Like, um, um, when I left the team in 2019, uh, like Nikolai and some uh, team managers told me that Hey, it's doors always open. So if you feel like you're coming back, just tell us. I was like, okay, thank you. I I really appreciated their uh, messages and stuff. But you know, I knew I I I didn't know, but I mean, like, um, I thought that I was gonna be done after Tokyo. But yeah, they were like, still, they wanted me. The fact that they wanted me still was a, like a big moment, I guess. I, I, it made me so happy. And I, I told Nick to give me a couple of days, a couple of weeks to think about it. But I was like, uh, I was like yes. <laughs> I was really happy about that. And uh, I decided to come, uh, come back here. Like, when was that? In June, I think? June 2021. So, yeah, that's how I came back here. And, you know, I wanted to play with Brian Bell again. So, my teammate, my buddy, my brother. So, I'm so happy to be back here now. Yeah, that's my story, I guess. <laughs>